Hello, my name is John Barrett. I am the Double E Technical Support Repair Manager here, and I am going to show you how to measure a shaft. Uh, and, and typically, it's a sales function in the field, um, and we want to make sure that we gather as much detail and information uh, for these shafts so that uh, it assists and helps our um, process in quoting and um, designing the shafts for customers' applications. Um, the first, first step um, in measuring a shaft or approaching a shaft is to determine if it's a, already a double E shaft. If it is a double E shaft, then you want to identify the serial number and the part number of the shaft, which is typically stamped on either the center of the shaft or on the pneumatic end of the shaft. That is the more standard uh, location uh, that we stamp our shafts um, as they're being manufactured. If it is not a double E shaft, then you want to make sure that you have the proper equipment to measure the shaft. Uh, the typical equipment that salespeople have in the field are, is a standard tape measure and a 6 inch or 12 inch vernier. Also, uh, if you have a small steel scale, um, that is also helpful, which I'll show you uh, when we start the measuring process here. So the first step is <coughs> setting the shaft up in a location that's safe and clean so that you can measure the shaft and get the, uh, the, the exact details of the shaft. Uh, I would start off by um, visually looking at the shaft and sketching the shaft. All the details as, as best you can as far as sketching. Uh, the, the journal features, the length, you know, the, the type of shaft it is, if it's a strip shaft or a lug shaft. Um, and also the locations of some of the key features, even though they're not dimensioned uh, initially, but you know where the tank valves are uh, on the ends of the shaft. So, again, the first the first step in measuring the shaft would be to start from the outside on both ends of the shaft to get the overall length. So, typically, you would want to find a location that you can either take the end of the shaft, put it up against a hard surface. So, when you're using your tape measure, if you're by yourself. You have a, a, an area of contact, and that'll tell you, you know, again, if you have a flat surface, you have something you can push against the tape measure as you are pushing against the tape measure and, and getting the measurement on the other end of the shaft, and I will demonstrate that. In this case, I'm by myself. Um, I have a, the steel scale, as I mentioned, and I'm going to tape it to the end of the journal. And you want to make sure that your tape hits the inside surface of the scale. And you want to rest it right up against the scale without pushing it and deflecting it over because you want to have as accurate as a dimension as you can get with a tape measure. You want to hold the tape in position once you have it there and work your way down the shaft. In this case here, this shaft visually by eye looking at the surface, so the edge of the journal is 67 inches. <clears throat> so at that point, every dimension you take, starting from this point moving forward, you want to document that on your sketch. So now you're, you're all set with the steel scale. The next step would be to get to measure the body length. So you want to capture where the journal comes into the end of the body. So there should be a lip, typically there's a lip on the housing that you can capture. Work your way down the shaft and again take the measurement on the end of the body, 62 inches. And again, mark that body length on the sketch, 62 inches. The second, or the next step would be to measure the, the journals. Um, you know, the first thing you want to identify is whether or not the shaft is typical or not. When I mean typical, the journals are the same from one end to the other. If they are the same, then you can, you can measure just the one end and that should be enough detail and just indicate that it's typical. So again, the first feature that I would measure on the journal would be the length. Again, measuring the length of the first feature, which is approximately 1.35. So I'll take that dimension and I'll mark it, on, mark, mark it on the print. Second dimension, next feature, 
is approximately 0.200 or 200 thou. So you want to measure that length on the next feature of the journal. And the next length would be the square, the length of the square, which is approximately one inch. So you have three dimensions. You'll have the first feature, second feature, and third feature. So you should have three different dimensions in length on the journal. The next step would be to measure the diameter, because this is a round. You want to measure the diameter of the, uh, of the journal, the first feature, and you want to indicate that it's a diameter symbol, which is a circle or an O with a line through it. Uh, so you want to take that dimension and mark it as a diameter. Uh, the second feature is also a diameter, so you want to take the same style me me measurement with the vernier. Uh, that's approximately 1.6 in diameter. So you, again, you want to mark the, uh, the print. The third feature is a square. So you want to, again, measure the square in two locations to make sure that it is truly square. Compare those two dimensions and then indicate on the drawing with a square symbol with that dimension, whatever square size that is. And that is, in this particular shaft, 1.57. So again, it's typical, so it's the same on the opposite end of the shaft. Um, again, your tank valve is, is located on one end. In this case, it's on the body. So you want to measure the distance from the end of the body to where the tank valve location is, and you want to capture the center of the tank, of the tank valve from the end to the end of the body, which is approximately 1.75. And you want to make sure that uh, you know, your dimension, that location, indicate that that is where the tank valve is. Now, once you've completed your measuring of the shaft, some of the other things that you want to take into consideration are the customer's cores, uh, the, primarily the ID of the core and the quality of the core. You want to measure the core's ID in three different locations. That way you can get a more accurate dimension of what the core actually is on the shaft. Secondly, you want to make sure when you're measuring the journals, because those are the typically, typically the wear items, you want to make sure that you're measuring in locations that aren't worn. Because if they are worn, that could change. You know, when we take those dimensions, uh, they could be incorrect or in inaccurate because the journals are worn. So that's something that you definitely want to uh, observe. Uh, things that you can do to get around that is either um, measure a good clean spot in the journal that does not appear to be worn, that has a similar diameter or even square or just the feature itself is not worn, or measure the mating piece such as a chuck or the support if that's available in, in certain cases. So those are some of the things that you want to make sure that uh, is documented on the sketches uh, when you're done and completed with your measuring of a shaft. Thank you.